It's the Dermcast studio again with Rob Kiskeho. Welcome back. I have the distinct pleasure today of talking with a really good friend and a great colleague, Sarah Wachowski. Welcome, Sarah. How are you? Great. It's good. such an honor and a privilege to be here today. And I, I love having you here. We're going to talk about something really cool um, in, in terms of angling therapies and psoriasis and managing psoriasis. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your backdrop as a clinician? Certainly. So I've been a dermatology PA for over a decade, and just like all of you, I'm passionate about dermatology, but my area of expertise is psoriasis. That, that disease state is something that's just I'm very passionate about. But moreover than that, as we're watching healthcare kind of change, I think it's a really a beautiful thing that we're starting to branch into other treatment modalities and therapeutic interventions that stem far beyond what pharmaceuticals can do. So it's been this great honor to do some extra training through the Institute for Functional Medicine and the School of Applied Functional Medicine. And I've been bringing that back into the clinic with patients and it's, it's been a wild success. That's great. So uh, I'm excited because I'm very passionate about treating psoriasis too. In fact, the dermatology practice I trained in was, had a psoriasis treatment center. I was doing Geckerman, literally painting tar on people and zipping up in canvas suits and putting them in light booths. Uh, I ruined a hundred white jackets with tar. So this is exciting for me. This is very cool. So before we go on, tell us a little bit more about uh, the training that you've done and uh, where you've done this and the, the format you, you had gone through. Yeah, so I started through the Institute for Functional Medicine and they are just physicians, MDs, DOs, NPs, PAs that are passionate about treating patients on a different light and trying to get to the source of the inflammation and using nutraceuticals such as probiotics or fish oil or vitamin D to try and help these patients on their journey to wellness. And that's kind of where it started. And then everybody teaches in a different way. And Tracy Harrison through the School of Applied Functional Medicine has just a different way of, of teaching. And I liked the way that she was teaching as well. So I kind of did both, but I actually take my IFM certification in the fall. That's great. So uh, that's everything you said so far, very relevant to all of us because we have access to these. Uh, I mean, let's face it, let's give them their due, fantastic medications, but there's issues, right? Um, larger health issues, um, expense of these medications. So the, the conversation of how to manage disease, let's say in accordance with, or maybe even outside of these therapeutics is, is uh, probably something we don't talk about often enough. So uh, tell me in your approach to psoriasis and uh, the integrative methodologies that you like, what's your sort of mile high view? How do you go about uh, integrating it into psoriasis folks? Excellent question. And I think the biggest and the most important takeaway from this is you have to meet the patient where they are. Not every patient wants to be treated that way. Some of them just want their medication X, Y, or Z, and that's okay. That, that routine treatment isn't for them. But if I have a patient that kind of starts to ask more questions like, well, is there anything else? Or what might be driving my inflammation? Or can I take a probiotic? Or is food part of the process? That's when I start to jump in and say, actually, yes, I can help you on your wellness journey because I don't want to just get them better. I want to get them well. And that starts to open doors for conversations. And usually where I start is food. Food is friend or food is foe. So if I can get them to just start eating a little bit better and you know maybe just incorporating some more vegetables in their diet, that's still gonna start helping them on their journey to wellness. And that's, that's a great approach. Um, I think perhaps this works its way into uh, the clinical conversation for let's say the average clinician is we know that they need to lose weight. But just as part of the overall health, we know it can probably help with their psoriasis. So for me, I would say that simply as the old conversation of watch your sugars and your saturated fats. It's not terribly in depth, but it's a very broad principle. So is this, is there something specific you like to tell people with food, for instance? So I would, I would take that a step further. I would actually, for the patient that's willing, right? Again, you have to meet them where they are. I would start with the Mediter Mediterranean diet. Now, I don't like to call it that, just mm -hmm. because once you put the word diet in there, that can sometimes give that negative connotation to a patient that, oh, well, she's saying that I have a problem with my weight, which is not what I'm getting at. Yes, weight loss can be a result of changing the diet, but from my standpoint, I wanna alter the gut microbiome, because what we know through the science advances 
the gut microbiome can actually help our biologics work better and help the patient not only right. lose weight, but feel better and increase energy. So that's really where I start is the cardiometabolic food plan is how I term it. It's just a fancy word for the Mediterranean diet. And I have it pre-printed on a handout and just hand it to the patient. Okay, and so briefly tell our viewers about the Mediterranean diet. Yeah, so the Mediterranean diet, simply put, is following a healthy diet with lean meats, chicken, fish oil. There's a lot of data on fish oil being beneficial for inflammation and helping with pro-inflammatory resolvins. So that's something in increasing the vegetables. We know that the vegetables carry all these polyphenols and those again can go back to helping the gut microbiome and feeding the microbes in our gut to help them function in a way that brings health to the patient. That's great, fantastic. And you know, so it makes sense in terms of, of even just broader health, but we know these diseases are pro-inflammatory states. There's a genetic tendency, there's a physiologic tendency, and it doesn't help when they're not healthy. So uh, I think from, uh, again, a uh, slightly broader view, uh, maybe briefly explain how biome changes uh, inflammatory processes uh, in, a, in a synopsis. Yeah, so the first time I was at an IFM gut microbiome lecture, I was shocked. And I will never forget Vincent Pedri saying that 70% of the gut microbiome harbors the immune system. That was profound because we're taught that, no, 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 it's on the skin or in another organ system. But that was really something that hit home for me. So if we can dampen the inflammation, whether it be from food or vitamin D or fish oil, we're actually giving our patients a better opportunity to respond better to these medications that we can prescribe to them in the clinic. That's great. So, uh, you know, it, where do you start integrating this? Is it a conversation right out of the gates? Is it when you decide to do systemic medicine or start talking about systemic medicine? Uh, where does it fit in your evaluation uh, for these uh, for the psoriasis folks? So when I have a patient who has psoriasis and they come to see me for the first time again, I, just like we're doing, we're having this conversation and I'm trying to gauge where that patient wants me to go with their care. Mm -hmm. And I'll start asking questions like, well, what does your diet look like? And that's an easy one. And if they say, you know what, uh, I eat healthy. Okay, maybe this isn't the appropriate time to have that conversation, but I might start with a workup. I do a pretty comprehensive workup on all my psoriasis patients, understanding there are no guidelines for it, but I'm checking a CBC, a CMP, an HSCRP, and I'm also checking their vitamin D levels and fasting insulin, because that's gonna give me some insight on where to go with this patient, as well as hep screen, you know, quantiferum gold, in the event that we are gonna- Because you know it's coming, I, potentially. Right, I, right. Well, yeah. let's just do one poke for right, the patient. Sure. So, yeah. And this gives me some data mm -hmm. that I can work with the patient on and say, okay, this is where we need to work, and this is where our focus needs to be, and that will help kind of guide some of the later decisions, because it's a relationship with these patients. That in, uh, I think that maybe that gets lost a lot of times because we have such good medications. There's a, uh, and I don't think there's anything wrong with this. You know, we want people to do well quickly, but the conversation goes really quick into, we're going to use this medication. You're going to do great on it, and so you bypass the general health, the big picture mm -hmm. uh, scenario. So this is uh, that that's very useful in terms of uh, evaluating folks. And is there a situation? Are you making targets for the patient, like we need to lose 10 pounds. Uh, are you going there or not really? I don't have that conversation with the patient. I'll start with those inflammatory biomarkers and say, okay, this is where we are. Your CRP is 10, but I want it to be less than one. And here's some ways that we can do this. And one of them is through nutrition. And in that moment, I will give them that cardiometabolic food plan and I might even send them to a nutritionist. Um, and then we'll check, take a look at their vitamin D levels. I've been taking vitamin Ds on my patients who have psoriasis and other diseases for the last three years and six, eight, 15. I mean, they're all deficient. Mm -hmm. So, and vitamin D is powerful. Vitamin D can modulate over 200 in cytokines in the body. Mm -hmm. So if I'm supplementing this patient with all this good nutrition, the weight's gonna come off, the energy's gonna come back, and we're gonna start dampening the inflammation, and that's gonna allow those meds to be that much more successful. Okay, that's great. So let me ask you this then, um, quick hits on, uh, so vitamin D supplementation's easy enough. Um, food sources for vitamin D. 
So you can get, I mean, I'm not a fan of getting vitamin D through milk. Okay, we know, especially with our acne patients, that milk mm -hmm. can be very, or dairy, excuse me, can be very pro-inflammatory. So mm -hmm. I don't like to get it from dairy, but you can get it from spinach, kale, vitamin D you can get from fish. So I prefer the fattier fishes like salmon, and you're also gonna get those omega-3s. So if I can do food first with patients, great, but not everybody wants to eat salmon or right. kale. And you know, I'm always like, bitter the better. Yeah. Um, so th then I'm gonna go to some of the nutraceuticals and start supplementing the patients with like pills or tinctures. Okay, great. And is there anything else uh, specifically dietary um, supplement aside from vitamin D that you like to use for anti-inflammation uh, biome, um, do you like probiotics, uh, et cetera? Is there anything specific that you like to do there? Love to do vitamin D. Mm -hmm. I love to put my patients on fish oil and probiotics are so important. There's so much data around probiotics, but we need to be mindful that the bug is the drug. Just like we're not gonna give a patient vancomycin for acne, oh my goodness, I, that's, an, that's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. So we need to be prescribing the appropriate probiotic for the patient based on the disease. And that data is coming. So we know that Saccharomyces boulardii, and that's the one that I typically start with, it's actually a yeast. And it can dampen nuclear factor kappa B, so NF kappa B um, levels, which will downstream turn off TNF alpha, IL-22s, and other inflammatory cytokines. But we also know that Bifidobacterium infantis, for example, is one that we're seeing improve patients with psoriasis. And then lactobacillus is also helping patients who have acne. So the yeah. data is coming. It's That's just great. not all out yet. So then for our viewers, um, a quick, a good reference for them to go and start looking at some of these things. Probiotic advisor. I think it's like $50 for the year. And you can type in the disease state and it'll give you, based on what country you live in, actual probiotics for that disease state with the studies that you can start utilizing in the clinic. That's great, fantastic resources. And, and uh, I, this is fascinating, and we'll probably talk for hours on this, but let me close with this. What's, what's the end game then? Are you, um, are you looking for this broad approach and the, the integrative style? Are you looking to uh, stop medication? Are you looking to control them without it, uh, maybe minimize it? Um, is, there, is there an end game? The end game is just to get the patient healthy. Again, my, my goal as the clinician is not to get them better. I want to get them well. And for some of them, yes, I get to remove a medication, but that's not the case for everybody. So for me, it's just how can I help them on their journey to wellness? And if I am able to remove some medications, great. If not, all I know that I'm doing is I'm making those meds work better. That's fantastic. I, so I don't, you know, as a clinician, uh, a lot of this stuff is, are things that I'm aware of, have never really applied them in practice. So you got, you got me interested now. So we gotta talk <laughs> more about this. Um, but you validated a lot of what I personally believe as a clinician is it's really more about wellness. We're not just gonna clear their skin and pat them on the head and be okay with it. You know, there's the broad approach of, I don't want you to have heart disease or diabetes or be overweight. I want you to exercise uh, and watch for other signs of disease and, and have your risk properly assessed according to your age. So you're validating at least the way I think. Uh, I, start, I need to start looking at some of these integrative methods. Very cool stuff. Awesome, so, awesome. Thank you so much for uh, sitting with us and, and giving us just these little snippets that we can get interested in. And um, for all you do for SDPA, it's great to sit with you and have a chat, you know, fellow Detroiter. Yeah, yeah. thank you so much for your time. It's yeah. been a privilege. All right, thanks, thanks, Sarah. Once again, for Dermcast TV, it's Rob Cascale in the Dermcast studio in Austin, Texas.